Oriol Juncosa, Managing Partner of Encomenda VC, a super angel fund that invests in seed rounds. And please welcome also Unai Franco, co-founder of White Peak Partners, 10 years of experience in the banking industry, Merrill Lynch. And actually, you've been in Merrill Lynch too, I believe. So you guys are partners in Merrill Lynch? You met each other at Merrill Lynch? No? Please welcome Oriol and Unai. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alex, for, for, your kind, for your kind introduction. I mean, uh, this, is, uh, this is going to be sort of a, a very interactive talk, OK? Uh, what we want to do is we will, we will review very quickly a few of the, I would say, building blocks for fundraising. And then we will, open, we will try to open quickly to, to questions that you may have. OK, uh, myself, um, my name is Oriol Juncosa. I am managing partner with Encomenda. Encomenda is, is, a, is, is an early stage. I, I'm also a, a, an early, a growth stage uh, tech advisor for a number of, of, of companies. And uh, I was also CFO for, for, for Carto, which is one of the leading software companies here based in, uh, here based in Spain. Before that, I was uh, uh, a venture capital investor with, uh, with Nauta Capital. Hi, uh, good afternoon to everyone. My name is Unai Franco. I am co-founder of White Peak Partners, a specialist advisory firm uh, focused on raising funds for tech companies. I'm based in London, and as uh, presenter said, uh, I spent uh, 10 years in banking in, in, in London. So, um, but before we start, how many entrepreneurs are in the room? OK, so quite a few. Um, how many has, have already raised some money? Good. Um, how many are looking to raise money? Maybe more than two million. OK, good. So you're in the right place. Um, it goes without saying that at this stage, you will have a, 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 an idea, actually a product, or even better, you have a solution that is attractive uh, and it's investable and it has the potential. You know it. You have to communicate it in order to get funds to get there. So uh, you. No, you can't hear it. Uh, okay. Now, OK, thank you. Uh, you are in the right place. We're going to tell you everything you need to know about the, the financing uh, stages. Um, we will cover all the areas from preparation to investor meetings, the agreement, the due diligence, documentation, and closing. And remember, all this is uh, equally relevant to all types of uh, fundraising from, seed, from a seed round to Series A, B, or beyond. More money obviously requires a higher level of, of accuracy and is, is a more demanding process, takes more time as well. Uh, but uh, what I'm going to tell you about now is pretty much equally relevant to everything, to all, all the different rounds. So um, let's kick start. First question, what material should I produce? Um, Remember that the purpose of the, of, 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 of the materials is not just to communicate to investors. Take it as an opportunity to track the progress of your company. So we would say that you should definitely have an up-to-date and accurate product roadmap, KPI metrics dashboard, a business plan, also known as the financial model, um, an investor teaser, and a fully-fledged investor deck. Those would be the absolutely bare minimum. And all of them are interrelated and equally important. Let me give you a few tips on, on, on each of those. When compiling a product roadmap, make sure that you describe every feature, every product, not only in the time that it will um, require to implement it, but also in, the, in other resources that it may require, as well as the impact it will have in your company. It could be in terms of revenue. It could be in terms of the funnel improvement. It could be in terms of uh, better retention. Whatever it is that that feature will achieve, put it in, because it will be very handy when you are assessing um, adapting the business model as you move along. Because as you will learn, the, fund the fundraising uh, is a very iterative process. You're going to get a lot of feedback that is going to fit through to the business plan and the strategy of the company. KPI metrics, make sure you cover all the key metrics. Make it relevant to the industry. You need to cover all the industry relevant metrics. If you are in mobile centric, it will be DAOs, mouse. Um, uh, churn, uh, retention of, 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 uh, of users. If you are in a SaaS model, it will be churn, of course. Uh, the revenue, the MRRs, etc. Uh, it will be both by financial and very importantly also operative. If you happen to get your hands on competitor information publicly, make sure you um, assess those metrics as well because you may be measured against those. Um, and it will be useful for you to, to know where you stand. 
business plan, a financial model, ideally a four or five year plan with monthly and yearly projections, with an analytical PL, cash flow, balance sheet, even if basic. Um, you will build a revenue model, a cost model, and prepare monthly analytical financials so you can easily maintain the model. Make sure your accountant is on board so that you don't end up consuming a lot of your precious time in order to match the accounting, the analytical PL with the model, because the model is going to suffer a lot of changes along the way that can be pretty time consuming. Finally, a fully fledged presentation. Sorry, before the fully fledged presentation, an investor teaser, which will cover the basics of your idea. That's how you start making investors thirsty or hungry about, about knowing more about, about who you are and what you're trying to achieve. And then finally, a fully fledged investor presentation, which should expand on all the key topics that you already mentioned in a, in a, in a first pitch or in an in a investor teaser. This should include also KPIs, uh, up to date KPIs, clients, and market feedback. Here, just to just to interject, what is important is that you assess, I mean, how developed is your business? I mean, if your business is not very developed, okay, I mean, the KPIs, balance, uh, business plan, and so forth will be, I mean, probably, I mean, not as deep as uh, some of the businesses that have been, uh, that have had sort of two, three, four years of experience, eh, that have had been running for two or three years of experience. It's, it's very important that if you are more early stage, you, in, your, in your presentation, you communicate more your vision because there's not much past to communicate, okay? So, so, so that you adapt your, your, your materials to your, to your stage. So, and, and a very important question is how much money should I, should, should I ask for? Please? Okay, thanks. Um, ideally, how much money uh, should, I, should you ask? Ideally, it should cover all the operations and the growth for the next 18 months. But be honest with yourself. Be honest with the worst case scenarios, uh, those that you most fear. Uh, try to, ideally, try to uh, account for a certain level of contingencies in case something goes wrong, because sometimes things do go wrong, as you, as you may know already. Um, Practically, though, um, you may want to consider also what your, your ask uh, of money is, is actually telling to investors. You may want to consider raising a bit more than you actually planned initially, uh, if you sense that the market will welcome it. Uh, because what you are asking for when you, when you put yourself in front of an investor, whatever you are saying, even the, the money that you're asking, is actually giving a statement. Uh, take it in the context, and uh, that should also uh, be taken into consideration um, as to um, sizing basically the round. And, and actually for this question, which is very critical, just understand, have in your mind that, I mean, amongst the two of us, we have probably seen something like 500 to 700 business plans. I would say that maybe one, two, three have achieved the business plan. Maybe one, two have uh, been above the business plan. So that means that when you put together your business plan and when you think about how much money should I raise, okay, you need to think that you will probably, unfortunately, underperform the business plan. Even if it is your most conservative business plan, okay, it al almost always happens. So make sure that you are covered if, let's say, uh, your revenue line is, be is, 75%, is 25% below what it should be. I mean, obviously, if the revenue line is zero when it should be a million, then you have a problem anyway, you will probably not fundraise. But understand that the variability, I mean, around 25% is usually what we have seen of underperformance. So, so your, your, the money that you raise should be able to stand those wins. So, Oriol, why, why don't you explain them how you uh, would estimate the value of the company? Absolutely. So, um, I mean, Company valuation, well, uh, how many of you have done any finance in your life? How, how many of you have studied finance? Okay, in finance, valuations, uh, people tell us, oh yeah, discounted cash flows, things like that. Okay, no, I mean, in, in, um, in venture and in, uh, uh, for, for entrepreneurs, the key areas where you will sort of be able to measure your valuation is performance, okay? Pot, uh, potential of the company and the momentum, okay? Performance meaning, okay, um, 
uh, how, how, is the, how has the revenue line been? And in performance, the most important thing to value the company is growth. Usually, but growth can be growth in users, can be growth in revenue, okay? But growth is the most important driver of your company. And then at a certain stage, it's also international, okay? In how many markets are you, okay? This is what investors really appreciate, okay? Then you will have the potential, okay? So is your product able to quickly globalize, to quickly internationalize using not much capital, so being quite capital efficient, okay? That's quite important for, for, for investors. And finally, momentum, okay? For instance, right now, if you were to launch a new e-commerce physical products uh, website, I mean, unless it's sort of vertically integrated own brand, it would, be, it would not have momentum with, with investors. Or if you are looking at an advertising technology company, right now, it's very difficult to get financing for advertising technology companies, okay? So those are uh, sort of the, the three parameters, okay? Your performance, your potential, and your momentum. And then it changes from sector to sector, okay? If you're looking at, for, for, for instance, um, e-commerce, e-commerce value uh, over revenue, because usually you, you would apply a multiple over your revenue, okay? Would be, depending on the stage, would be from one times your revenue to two, uh, times your revenue, two and a half times your revenue, but not a lot more than that, okay? Whilst if you are in a SaaS company, uh, high growth SaaS, you will probably multiply your revenue to get your, to your valuation by seven, 10, 15, okay? So it's a very different valuation profile, and you need to understand in your case how, I mean, what are the key drivers of, of, of the company? And, and certainly, and for instance, if you are in games, Games usually tend to have positive EBITDA, EBITDA if they are very successful early on. So then you probably will be valued on a, on a multiple of EBITDA. So valuation is usually based on multiples. If you don't have revenue, do a multiple on your users, okay? which is usually what most people do for, for non-revenue companies. And you need to ask around okay, to see how your peers are being valued. Okay? Because that will also depend on the momentum. So, yes. Uh, so then, uh, how much time should I allow for the, for the round, Unai? Well, I mean, in our experience, uh, you should, um, a financing round should generally take anything between four to nine months, generally speaking. Uh, on average, that would come up to five, six months. Uh, that would be, though, for a round, let's say, above two million. If the round is less than a million, it could take five to eight weeks. Uh, it could be quick. Um, just remember that, uh, you know, our, our, Throughout those six months, and this accounts from the you know the old stages that we discussed, from preparation all the way to work, to to the end when the money actually hits the bank account of the company. So um, out of those six months, roughly, just remember that the last two months are pretty much uh, exclusively um, devoted to the contract negotiation and the due diligence, and then you have to add another month could be maybe three weeks, maybe a bit less, depending on the chemistry, uh, but roughly three, four weeks uh, for the term sheet uh, discussion and negotiation, and everything else uh, before would then be absorbed by contacting investors and the preparation. So it is not like sort of you go out of the door and you say, okay, here is money, I, I need money, and it's just sort of like six weeks. No, it, it, it kind of sort of doesn't happen like that. It's true that if you're at a, a early seat stage company, it can be very quickly, or it can be fairly quickly, okay? But, but I mean, for, for larger companies, when you want to raise sort of two, three, four, uh, four million, it it's usually takes, uh, I mean, a number of months, okay? For, uh, for, from anything from three, four, up to six, seven, um, uh, how you know was, was saying. So, with regards to investor meetings, okay? This is very important, is how you think about investors. Okay, let me tell you. I mean, investors is like clients. You need to think about investors like a funnel, okay? You need to build a funnel, and you need to think about, okay, depending on the size of the round, you will probably need to speak with 50 investors. 50 investors will be at the top of the, of the funnel, and then, I mean, some of them will say, will say, thank you, don't call me after uh, the, I mean, the first call. Some, some of them will say, okay, I'll come to my office or I come to your office. Okay. And then usually what happens okay, is that 
on a, on a round of uh, more than 2 million, 3 million, okay, you, need, you speak with 15 investors, you get down to one or two term sheets, and hopefully one of them will be the one that will inject money uh, uh, in your company. So it's, it's very important to be broad, okay? Sometimes in seed uh, funding, okay, it happens that, hey, you're looking for 500K, okay? Um, and you're looking for 500K relatively soon because you also don't have much money in the bank. Okay, so then usually you will speak maybe with 10 investors and then in the end, I mean, sort of, you will do a round with, 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 uh, with a seed fund or with a, or with a few angels, okay? But think about it like, a, a, like a, the funnel that you have for, for, your, for, your, um, for your company, okay? Then, how, um, how, should I, how should you contact them, okay? I mean... Don't, uh, so I would say, be fearless, okay? Investors are all around, okay? So if you see an investor, you just, uh, um, I mean, it's important to know the background, okay? Because, because not all investors are the same, obviously, okay? Some investors are seed investors, so they will say, listen, I can only invest up to 500K. Some of the investors are focused on Series A, so that means 500 to, let's say, 5, 6, Uh, uh, seven million, okay, and some investors are growth investors. So what is important is that you know where your company is, how much money are you looking for, okay, and then from and then from there you do sort of the short list of the ones that are relevant for you. I mean, here we have added a short list of of a number of investors across Europe, okay, and and certainly it's important. Uh, I mean, to to sort of to broaden the to broaden the horizons, I would say. Okay, so, and, and the way to approach them should be either at, at meetings like those. Uh, usually it's also very important that you network with your peers. So someone in your sector has already gotten some money from someone or someone that you know, okay, so then ask for intros. It's important to have a qualified intros. Use advisors, whatever, but it's important to have this qualification. And if you happen to be here, even you see an investor, Check uh, LinkedIn, understand where he's, where, I mean, what's his stage of investing, understand whether you're relevant or not, and then go for it. Just present yourself, okay? So uh, w what are the key questions for investors? I mean, as I was saying before, what are the valuation, the key valuation questions of, of, of your company? M mainly performance, potential, and momentum. Investors will know about momentum, okay, because it's, it's their job. Okay, and they will ask you about the, the performance that you have gone through and the potential that you have, okay? So, for instance, in terms of performance, what's your team experience? What are the competitive advantages of the product? And something very important that Dunai was saying, what are the key KPIs of your, of your company? Like, f what is the funnel of your clients, okay? See, if you start with 100 leads, how you go down to... Uh, one client, uh, what's the conversion rate, okay? What's the evolution of your users? Something that investors now are asking more and more. What is your cohort, okay? So I, you get new investors in, okay? Uh, you, you get new clients in, how do you lose them over time, okay? That's very important that you are able to express and also if you lose them a lot, that you know how to uh, uh, prevent that from continuing happening. And then the potential, okay? So how big is the market? It's very important that even if you think that your market, I mean, uh, uh, that you, you try to provide an assessment of how broad can be the market, whether the market is global or is not global, okay? Investors usually want to understand whether the market has the potential to globalize at a relatively low cost with your current product or with your, the new versions that you're going to be releasing, okay? So just progressing, and don't worry, we'll have a number of minutes for questions, okay? So then, we're going to the agreement, okay? In the agreement, usually, uh, there's a first question saying, okay, should I do a price round or a convertible? So someone, who knows what's a convertible node? Someone knows what's a convertible node? Okay, basically, a, a convertible node is, uh, uh, is structured as follows. Investors put money now, okay? You don't negotiate the valuation of the company, but you put, uh, but then you convert that money that has been put now, okay, into the future at the future valuation 
when a new when a round happens. Okay, so in in a few months from now, you will have another round, and then what will happen is that you will convert that money, usually at a discount, to that round. Okay, so why is a convertible interesting? Is because it is speedy. You don't need to go through all the paperwork. Okay, and you don't need to negotiate that much to, to valuation. It leads valuation to someone else. Convertibles are used by a number of investors, okay? But usually, let me put it that, investors that want to lead, investors that want to add value, they will say, listen, I mean, I'm providing value now, okay? So probably it's not fair that I need to wait for somebody else to tell the company how much the company is value, okay? So some investors accept convertibles. I would actually usually suggest a convertible for as mounts, uh, I mean, below, let's say, 500K. But some investors will tell, listen, I don't want a convertible, I want a price round. Price round means that round, that company uh, is, uh, has this value, and I want to invest at that one, uh, at that, uh, that amount, and hence the, my, my share capital after we finish is this one. Okay? Convertibles are, again, are, are used sometimes in seed. In the US are, are used very frequently. In, in Spain are not, are not that, that used. Okay? So then, uh, the, the next is, should I sign a term sheet? Who knows what is a term sheet? Who has used a term sheet here? OK, perfect. I mean, you can use a term sheet if you are talking about sort of a seasonal round. At, at least you need to have some agreement on the basic terms of the deal with the investor before devoting a lot of time to actually writing all the agreement. OK? So it's very important that you have a basic understanding about the terms, not just how much money he's going to include, uh, to, uh, to invest, not just what's the value of the company, but also things like what are the voting rights? Who's going to vote on something? Okay? What are the veto rights? Is he going to be able to veto um, getting new people on the company or not? Okay? Uh, I mean, uh, for instance, also, there's a lot of talk about exclusivity. A number of people want to have exclusivity to only be able to negotiate with you. You're only able to negotiate with them. OK, make it as short as possible. Because if you are tied to someone, OK, that's not kind of sort of the best position in which you are. You want to make it as, uh, as short as possible. And what are the next steps after the term sheet? Well, you go to the diligence and you go to documentation. And we will quickly jump over the diligence, OK? What's, what's due diligence is, OK, investors basically have known you. They have seen your metrics. They, have, they, understand, they understand the business. They understand uh, your model and have said, listen, I want to invest here. Now, I want to see whether you have any skeletons in the closet, OK, or whether you're hiding anything, OK? So what do they want to see usually, OK? Do they want to see whether you have any problems with your employees, with your clients, whether you're not paying social security? whether uh, anyone has sued you, OK? They want to see where, whether actually what you showed in your beautiful presentation that, that you and I was, was, was mentioning before, OK? When you go, bank to, when, when you go down to the bank and to the, uh, and, and to the cash, actually corresponds one to the other, OK? So at, at seed stage, this thing is relatively quickly. It's, hey, send me your bank accounts. I mean, let's do a quick review of whether you have any pending litigation or not, but it usually takes one or two days, OK? At Series A, Series B, so as you require more money, OK, you will end up having a longer due diligence. You will have a big four, potentially, or a, or a big six, or whatever. Uh, I don't know how big they are, OK? But, uh, and then you will effectively have to provide a lot more documentation, OK? And what are the potential problems? I mean, what are the potential circumstances that would prevent you from passing a due diligence? Okay? Contracts with employees not regular. I, oh, yeah, he's just an, um, he just comes and does five or six hours per day. But there's no specific contract. That's very bad. Not paying taxes, not having a proper lease of, of the offices, having, having real contacts with related parties. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm employing the, the company of my wife, 
and yeah, it's been a big provider of us and so forth. Well, that's usually a, a significant problem, okay? Um, I, I mean, and also having big problems with, with uh, having weak contracts with your clients. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm supplying business to the client, but we don't have a, a contract, but they pay. Okay, it's fine uh, if, if, if you don't have investors. Investors want to have some certainty that the client will continue paying. No? Okay, so those are things that are very important. And it will take, as, as we said, for some of the guys, for, for seat may take, uh, sh sure, less than a week, a couple of days. When you go up, um, uh, the, the ladder of fundraising, it may take two to three weeks, okay? I think that we have only sort of three to four minutes. Um, uh, can we take some questions? Is there a mic for the audience? So, um, anyone has, has, has any question on, on what we have said so far? Okay, yes. Okay. Hello. Um, thank you. Thank you for the talk. Uh, how crucial is having an MVP in an early stage? Sorry? How crucial is having an MVP in a seed or early stage fundraising? So, so um, uh, okay, for the audience, the, the MVP is a mi minimum viable product. I like to say, to call it a minimum valuable product, okay? Because it needs to be valuable for someone, not just viable, okay? So, um, I mean, at, at seed stage, it, 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 it's, it's quite crucial in terms of valuation of the company, okay? If you don't have anything, okay? I mean, you need to show that you have a great vision with a super team and so forth so that you can get, I mean, sort of a, I would say, a proper valuation. If you, um, so the MVP is quite, is quite relevant at, 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 uh, at the stage, I would say. Okay, actually, it's very relevant at this stage. Just because investors want to understand whether you will be able to develop what you're promising to them. If you don't even have a product, okay, you need to tell them, listen, I've done it before. Okay, I've done it before. All my teammates have done it before. So, come on. I mean, it's, 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 it's like it's almost there, no? So, that's, that's, quite, that's quite important. Any other question on, uh, on, on the topics covered? Okay, excellent guys. So listen, th thank you for, uh, for your attention and we can thank take you very much. Uh, questions afterwards. Thank you. Thank you.